Every time I sat and waited, and people said, oh, you know, like in COVID, whatever, oh, the market is going to crash. Every time we sat and, and did nothing and waited for the market to correct, we lost because it never happened. And the honest truth is that they're, they've been telling me that the market is going to crash. Since the day started. Since the day we started. Yeah. We're in Houston right now, walking our new 56 unit crazy property here. It starts down there. We got a lot of billion dollar man. Another Tuesday, another podcast. Today's guest is a big developer in Brooklyn. Stop, don't say big. Come on, you're big. Small to mid-sized projects at scale. He's a very smart man. We became friends a couple of years ago, and I've watched him grow from a couple million dollars a year in developments to now north of $75 million in the pipeline this year alone. He just turned 30 years old. What an introduction for my good friend, Ariel Shalom. Ariel, introduce yourself, please. My name is Ariel Shalom. I'm a developer uh, mainly in New York City. Uh, now started a uh, new partnership with you in Houston, as everybody know. Uh, we started uh, a project in Houston. 138, uh, 138 units. 138 units that we're going to take it to the next level. Yeah. Um, very excited. I've been developing in uh, Brooklyn since 2004, I would say. Okay. 2004? No, 14, I mean. 2014. 2014, say, 2014. yeah. <laughs> no, 2014. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're here, You're you know. You're 12 years old. <laughs> 2014, and uh, now we're here. That's it, pretty much. We got a lot in the pipeline right now. In 2004, you were still in Israel, right? Mm hmm. No, I got here, 2004. You came to America in 2004. Yeah. And what did you do when you moved here? I was washing dishes three dollars an hour. Really? Mm-hmm. I dropped out of high school right when I came, maybe a year and a half into school, and uh, and that's it. I was uh, I started my journey as washing dishes for three dollars an hour. Wow! And then what did you do? What was the? What I do? What I do? I was washing dishes. We started as washing dishes, and then uh, my father opened the uh, pizza restaurant. A lot of people know me from there. Uh, we worked there for, let's say, about, I would say, four or five years. No, four, four or five years. After that, I went to the hair industry. I was uh, cutting hair for uh, until 2013, 14. And then uh, I wanted a change, and uh, I was looking into developments and uh, real estate and the first two weeks I said this is what I want to do how old were you back then? 22, 22, 21, 21, 21 or 22 21. what did you do in real estate when you got started? I was, uh, I was just doing acquisitions for a company I used to work for that's all I wanted to do. I, I I told them, you know, if I'm coming to work with you guys, I was making I was making between five and seven figures cutting hair, which was a lot for me back then. I would say five, like five figures more. Yeah. Which is a no, lot. Five to seven. Seven. To no, five. five to six. I said. Five to six. Yeah. I just wanted a change. You know, I I, I felt like I wasn't expressing myself to, you know, I I, I knew I can bring more. And uh, I was looking into I was looking into real estate. I was always uh, that, that always interests me. And uh, I just made that change one morning. You know, I went. I started. I started looking into it, and then uh, I knew no one in the real estate game, like zero. No family, no friends. Everybody I know today was through me working. Yeah. Um, but when I got there. I knew nobody. I knew nothing about real estate. I knew nobody. I had no money even. So a lot of people, as you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I want to start in real estate, but I don't have money. Or, oh, uh, you know, you started in real estate, but you know all these people. I know all these people now, but we, I, I never knew nobody. And um, that's pretty much it. So you got to know the acquisition side of the business, mm -hmm. short sales, I'm guessing, distressed deals, stuff like that, mm -hmm. specifically in Brooklyn? Uh, mainly in Brooklyn, I would say. And then mainly. you transitioned eventually into a developer? Uh, correct. You correct. had a partnership, I remember, with some people, and then that... I had, I had many different uh, partnerships. I had many different partnerships, and I still do. 
I still do. I, I believe in partnerships very, very much in healthy. It's just that today partnerships that I have are very, very healthy because of the people that's around me. I'm just, I'm just so grateful and grateful and thankful yeah. to be surrounded by the people I'm surrounded by today um, because it's, it's all about the people you're surrounded. You're also enjoying the environment you're working with. Yeah. Right. So, so I, I'm a strong believer in partnerships always, you know, I'm not the type of guy that, you know, I'll go in a deal even if I'm 10%. Yeah. I don't care. I just, if I believe in something, I just want to have a piece of it. If I can have a big piece, I'll have a big piece. If I have a small piece and you know, we did it together also yeah, yeah. where me and you put it together, one, two, three, and you know, we compromise a little bit, but we made it happen. It's not, it's not, it wasn't even about the actual deal. It's yeah. about us going on a journey together, right? And yeah. starting something new. And we weren't even like so greedy about, oh, I want this, oh, I want that. And we I did want... 1407 Foster. Correct. And now we're doing Houston together. Mm -hmm. So we bought a supermarket, two apartments with air rights in Midwood, Brooklyn together. Correct. And now we're buying 138 units in Houston, and yeah. only God knows what's next. Correct. Um, I have, I have t today. I feel like I'm, I'm ready more than ever, um, because of the journey I've been through, and uh, I'm so focused at my at my work. You know, we speak every single day, and I yeah. tell you, you know, uh, we have so much coming our way every single day. Yeah. You know, we have a problem that everybody wish to have. Yeah. Hundred percent, no question about Both it. Both of us, yeah. You know, we have that problem where we have a, a a pipeline full of deal flow, and we're just picking and choosing what we want to take and what we're not. And I reached. I spoke to you about this last week. I reached a point where I say I might have to stop for a little bit and just focus on what I have because we have so much to do. Yeah. Um, we just broke ground on the new project on Lexington. That's a big project. The twenty five it's it's mid size, twenty five thousand square feet. It's one of the biggest ones I have done. Twenty five thousand square feet. How much are you in for that for? When you say uh, I'm how much did you buy the land for? Four point two million. So what is that per buildable square foot? Two hundred and forty dollars a square foot more or less. But the best thing about this is that the best thing about this deal is that uh, I went into contract uh, to an agreement with a guy who sold me the property and I told him listen I'll give you whatever you're asking and just give me the time to go and file my plans and make sure I get my plans approved so the day I close is the day I start working and that's what happened and he agreed and that's the best thing that happened so I bought it at 240 a foot I think it's worth I would pay right now if you bring me something like that. I'll pay close to three hundred a foot if I have my approved plans with it. Yeah, which is an extra one and a half million dollars. Correct. Which is a lot of money. Even a million dollars, let's say. Yeah. You know, because you're you're in and out of the deal a lot faster, right? And how much is it to build that project per foot? It's it's it depends, you know, because I'm I'm we're the developers and we're 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 not really we don't really have a GC. We have a project manager, as you know, as our team, in our team. Um, it's costing us somewhere around the 300s, you know, but we're doing very, very high end. And this space, the space is very, very different. We have uh, a lot of things in this project that we can market this, we can market this 10, 15, 18% more than everybody else in the, in the neighborhood. Why? Because I have... Um, a lot of features or a lot of amenities, let's say, nobody has in that neighborhood, which is very hard. I have uh, indoor parking. Oh wow! Yeah, I have indoor. indoor park. Correct. I have indoor parking for almost more than half of the building. We have. I got a tax abatement without giving any law for uh, uh, law affordable. And the main, main, main thing. I have a lots of outdoor space in this building. A lot of outdoor space because we built That's it right. in a way. We built it in a way where it's the structure is different. I don't want to talk about it so much. I just want to bring it out, you know. Yeah. So back to the numbers then. Correct. Three fifty a foot to build, a two fifty a foot on the acquisition and say approvals. So you're in for six hundred a foot. What's the resale value out there? I just sold something up the block for 
anywhere from 1150 to 1250 a foot. And you say this is going to get a 20% premium. Correct. So you so, think this will get around 1400 a foot. I would say 1300 1250 I'm confident I'm getting. So $700 a foot net. Correct. So, but I didn't pitch my, my, the people who went inside the deal with me is, you know, my investors that have been working with me for eight years. Um, $700 so, a foot times 25000 square feet. It's not, you're not selling 25000 You're selling about seventeen five. let let's say. 17500 sellable? Correct. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Wow, that's a great payday. Yeah. Look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that? That's a ton of money. You no, know, I don't work for free. You know, when we uh, we did a lot of... Uh, but that's a grand slam deal. It is. Wow. It is. It is. Um, and that's why when, when it came, when I was looking at it, I was so excited. And uh, the down payment on something like that was 420000 I didn't even speak to anyone. I just went... And I, I cut the deal with the guy, shake his hand, and we had an understanding. Originally, the guy was asking seven million, and a lot of people. After I closed that deal, everybody's like, "Oh my God, you closed on for four point two. This guy was asking for seven for so long." And I said, "I don't know. You know, I, we just had a click. We sat down, we had lunch, and he's like, "Oh, I want." He, he, he was asking north of like just underneath five you know and and we cut the deal at 4.2 wow. and um so as soon as as soon as we we agreed on everything that night i remember i went home i uh i kissed your wife i i kissed my wife <laughs> maybe not <laughs> no kiss your kids i i spoke to my my investor yair everybody knows him um and and uh and I told him, listen, tomorrow morning I'm waking up. I'm not even waiting for nobody. I'm going to sign that deal. Um, you can come hop on with me, you know. And he's like, yes, for sure. I want to do it because we just had a crazy success down the block on 151 Quincy. Yeah. Um, Is that the building with the oval? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as you know, everything I'm building right now, after, after we built that, that's anything you see in Brooklyn that has that type of shape. It's yours. It's mine. So all the buildings that it's in my pipeline, everything that we're we're build, building currently is gonna be with that oval shape, and this is pretty much how you can know this is my project. It's an aerial project, mm -hmm. aerial shot on project. Correct. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a huge pipeline right now, but it's well deserved. Mm -hmm. I see the work you put in day in and day out. Listen, the main thing is I I really 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 enjoy what I do. Honestly, no, like, yeah. you know. We had we had this conversation the other day with um, with the investors and it was like a, I don't remember what what it was about but I'm really not in it for for the money anymore anymore and I don't think I was ever in it for the money I mean I was th the idea is yes you're in it for the money the idea but it's not something that drives me every single day yeah you know I just want to be the best at it I want to enjoy it. And I want to bring something because there's so many developers, right? There's so many people doing whatever I do and whatever you do. I just want to create, I want to bring out something completely different, you know, where even when people come and buy a unit from me or they buy a house from me, I want to provide them with a complete different look, everything, everything that has you to do. You want to be an experience. Correct. So That's why I knew you'd be perfect for our Houston project. Correct. When I looked at it, I'm like, man, Ariel would tear this up. And remember what you sent me? Right away when we went there, you started sending me renderings of what you think would change up the atmosphere in Houston, class B and C multifamily. Correct. Like room it's style. not, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily has to be, wow, you got to spend so much money and like, oh, we got to do like marble walls or whatever is... Uh, First of all, it's 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 what's behind the walls, right? We gotta make sure that behind the walls are like tip top, which is your plumbing, your electricity, yeah. no leaks, no mold, no, not a lot of that stuff, right? And then if you finishing the pro, if you if you're doing already the finishes, um, we wanna bring something completely different, you know. Especially, not a lot of people. When I told you, right, our project in Houston, yeah. 
It's not a high-end project. It's a mid-size project. It's a mid-size mid-end. Mid-size mid-end, but mostly it's like people that paying twelve, thirteen hundred, or eleven hundred. Let's say twelve, thirteen hundred uh, per apartment, and they can't afford the absolute luxurious apartment. But what what are we gonna provide them? We're gonna provide them a luxury apartment for whatever they can afford in not a luxurious area. But eventually, eventually, that area will turn into... Of course. And you're going to be the first one who did it. Yeah. So that makes you different from everybody else, right? When we buy a, a rental project in a mid-sized neighborhood, right? You remember we did the... We were looking around the neighborhood. We were like, houses are going for $300,000. Mm-hmm. That's not $50,000 houses. Correct. Well, this isn't the roughest neighborhood in Houston. Correct. Three hundred thousand is a pretty penny. It's working professionals. Correct. We're paying eighty-one thousand dollars a unit for the same size apartments, hypothetically, for they were same size in houses. Correct. So us changing these lofts into beautiful two bed two baths with a, a you know backyard and balcony, mm-hmm. we could provide the people an alternative for substantially less money. Mm-hmm. You know, and a comfortable living. Somewhere and you're the first one. That's that's the thing, right? With, uh, Right now, right now, right now, right now, we do. I'm doing a lot of projects in, let's say, in Greenpoint, in Williamsburg, in Clinton Hill, and stuff like that, right? But before, before, and even today, I'm open to do East New York, Brownsville, anywhere, because because money talks at the end of the day, right? So if I invest a dollar and I make a dollar back, or I invest a dollar and I make two dollars back, if it works in my performa, we can make it work. So. We have I have rental units in in East New York, right? And my investor he was like, "How much are you gonna rent my three bed uh, the two, our three bedroom two bath for?" I, I, I tell him twenty five twenty six hundred. He's like, oh, "It sounds very high." Um, and then he goes he research right, and then the comp shows fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred next door they rented for and he's like oh you know it's 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 gonna rent for 15 1600 i said go look at the unit fast uh, i mean we, we we end up finishing the project and we end up hitting the numbers i told him it's because people don't mind paying more they just they just want something beautifully done so you're gonna give somebody a three bedroom two bathroom right now in anywhere in, in new york they're gonna pay twenty five hundred dollars minimum. You go into a higher, you go into a higher end area. They're gonna probably pay five, six, seven thousand. Yeah. And also a lot of a lot of a lot of the complaints. Let's talk about the complaints that a lot of developer has in the market. Yeah. Well, first things first. They don't have a pipeline. Mm-hmm. Most people struggle every day. People hit me up and say, "How do you have deal flow?" They don't know how much we invested in getting deal flow and how on top of we are of people. To make sure we consistently get that. I, I say, I say, the, the game definitely changed, right? The, the game definitely changed. Um, in what way? In in a way where where um, I just feel like when before we got into the game, let, let's say eight nine years ago, yeah. Those developers used to make a lot of money because um, I don't think there were so many buyers like there is today. And so many developers like there was today. Hundred percent. Right. The atmosphere is way more competitive. So, so people used to just make money and do nothing. Honestly, that's even me when I started. It was a lot easier to bring home run deals than today. Right. Yeah. That's the honest truth. But you can still bring home runs all day long. Even today, tomorrow, it doesn't matter. It it's, it depends how many hours you're gonna put you're gonna put into this journey that you're gonna take. Right. I agree. Um, so I just feel like oh the people that started 10 15 years before us they just had a much better um deal flow because there were there weren't so many buyers and so many developers so today you just have to really work in order to become a, a busy developer you know it's not it's not also just knowing how to develop right I I call it I call it art why it's 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 it, there's so many things involved because it's not only developing it's it's you gotta know you gotta recognize how to buy 
right? Because a lot of people how to buy, how to finance, how to raise money, how to satisfy everyone's <laughs> wants and needs. Correct. Then how to design and lay out floor plans. All my floor plans, I call you for. Correct. You you work on a on, on your floor plan for a year and a half. Yeah. You called me up, and changed you, everything. I changed everything in yeah, thirty four. And I loved it. Right. And but that's you've got an eye for that. I got an eye, and and. It's something that came from the hair hair industry, right? When I was cutting hair, or I was I was I was just seeing. I, I don't even know how to describe it, right? But I see the finished product before it's even finished. Like as soon as I, even when we went to Houston, we went on a tour, right? We saw so many properties, and then those properties that we just bought, we toured them, and I was like, uh, Alan, we gotta buy these three. Well, let's make a deal with him on all three of them. I like them. Without we really we, we didn't really punch numbers, nothing. It's it's. it's I just, mean, we knew roughly. We, was, we knew yeah, we knew roughly. Yeah. But we have, I think today we have an experience and we see, we we feel, and I'm a guy where I see I see it with my eyes and I punch in numbers in my head and it works in my head and I go for it. Yeah. See, me and you are dangerous in the field because we know what we're looking at. You but know, you know what? I have never, I have never, 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 and I'm telling you, and anybody can witness, I have never failed on purchasing anything that wasn't worth the money we purchased. One of my best, one of my best trades in this game is that I know how to purchase. Like the sometimes. Money's made on buying. Yeah, but again, a lot of people are buying well, even better than us, right? But at the end, they make no money. Yeah. At the I end, I just bought a portfolio from this guy of eight houses. He was buying at one seventy a house, what one thirty or one seventy a house. Tenants not paying. He's not managing properly. Lots of problems all over the place, mm. and uh, taking mortgages, somewhat higher interest, you know, lower rents. I bought his entire portfolio at two twenty one. He made on me like twenty thousand dollars a door. You know, I'm like twenty thousand a door. I, I think I'm going to make on this eighty thousand a door. You know, and he made on me twenty. But you're right. He bought even better than I bought, and he just didn't maximize the properties. Value. I call it. I call it art because it's also. When when you when you going on the devel development right, you gotta let's say the right way to do things is like you bring fifty percent of the purchase to purchase the 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 land the land or if you're converting it from a warehouse to something, you bring fifty percent of it at least. What and the lender brings the other fifty percent? Yes. Okay. And then you draw your construction. Now you you gotta know how to draw. You gotta know how to draw. Sometimes it's. It, that's what I'm saying. You have to have the entire, f like, it's uh, a lot of people, a lot of people that come to our field, you know, they're investors from there, investors from there. They're not, what are they investing in? Yeah. What are they investing in? They're not, people who invest in the deal are making a big mistake, right? Because if there is no operator, your money is gone. You know what? You told me something once. You said, Alon, we got to be careful in Brooklyn. And the reason I'm so successful in Brooklyn is because I'm in the field all day. Right. They're like I, I've seen guys come into Brooklyn much smarter than me and you with much more money than Correct. me. Correct. And they've lost everything. Correct. Because three tenants don't want to pay and take over a building. Correct. And it takes you three, four years to evict. And if you don't properly, it's not. It's not even that. I seen. I seen. I'm. I'm. I'm looking at people's mistakes all the time, right? And I hope I never make them. So when they, when, when I see somebody fails, it, it interests me, very much because. I want to know why he failed, right? Because I want to make sure I'm not going to do that too, right? And most uh, big people have failed, bigger than us. Much and bigger. I told you, and I told you, like I don't want to, I don't want to call out names or whatever. But there was offices where they had, they raised, they raised easily, 150, 200 million dollars behind them, right? And uh, we know some of the same people. No, yeah, yeah. They, exactly they, 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 they raised 150. It's not easy yeah, to raise that. Hard. It's not easy to raise that type of money. And they also had a deal flow better than us. They yeah. had a deal flow for everything. Yeah. So they, I don't know. I don't know if they invested everything or whatever. I don't know how the money was was handled over there. 
but um, those people bankrupt. Yeah. Right. And they had managers, and they had people working for them, and they had offices, and they had they fa- fancy cars, and 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 they had all that stuff, right? And then at the end of the day, they failed. And 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 one of the reasons why they failed is that, like I told you, you're saying, you spoke about this this week, right? You you created a team, and it was all about creating a team which is i i think it's it's true because this is what i have done this year and it changed my life completely because i was just like i don't know if you were i was just like you before i was doing everything by myself i was buying by myself i was finding the deal by myself i was raising money by myself i was i was doing everything by myself and there's so much i can do like you said and today i have eight people working with me full time in my team and I'm just, I'm just so free. That's why I travel so much, and I have a great team with me together. And and you use my team sometimes too. Yeah. Correct. And I use your team too. And um, and I'm just enjoying. I'm I'm just and today. I'm enjoying grow, growing other people like the the younger generation. Like you know, I have twenty year olds also working for me. I'm we're we're ten years older than them or eight years older than them, and I enjoy. I, I enjoy seeing them being successful and because if they're success if they're succeeding right that means I'm gonna be succeeding also I agree um, it's very important to bring people up with you correct you know I love teams yeah I, I you know it's something that I I was never I, I I always I always wanted to do it I didn't know how to do it I didn't know how to do it and I'm still learning how to do that because I'm just used to doing everything by myself, and it's not it's not the right thing to do, you know. And do everything by yourself. Correct. It's not the right thing to do, but. but I, listen, teams are expensive. They are expensive. It took me four years until I could start hiring properly. Correct. So. You know, yeah, I built too. the business first, built the you know the cash flow, built something behind me. And then I started using that money for the team. So hypothetically, if I have 10 new projects tomorrow and they don't go as planned, at least my cash flow covers my team. Right. You know, so I'm not going to go under based on, you know, the economy. It's, I have a backing now and that backing is stable and safe. So now I don't have to worry about selling this, building that, everything. That's a deal. That's a deal if I deal with it. The the bottom line is that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know what you're good at and what you're not good at and be, and be honest with yourself, right? I'm being honest with myself all the time and I beat myself when I make a mistake. I said, you know, I take it hard on myself. I'm a great person on the field. You know, I like to be outside dealing with my contractor, dealing with my interior designer, dealing with the people who are selling me the stuff. You know, I'm great outside because I can be everywhere. Boom. I, I smell it. I feel the outside. And then when you bring me into the office, I can't stay there more than a half hour, one hour. Yeah. And even when I'm there, it took me two, three years to realize that I need to hire somebody for the office. And that's what I've done. And... It's okay not to be good at it, but you got to recognize what you're good at and what you're not good at. Yeah. And if you're not good at it, go hire somebody that's good on it, pay him. My guys love you. Correct. You inspire them all the time. Because it's a totally different world. It's completely different world. And today, you know, I hired somebody to manage my entire office. And this is what the person does for a living. You know, he was creating teams. He was managing an office. And I have my office in a completely different place in the past from in the past eight nine months and we're more focused focused like where like, do you see the market going and personally where does yourself go with it i like i like i like that question a lot because i was i was um having uh, dinner with one of my friends um and he was asking me the same thing he's also an investor and he's investing in many different things and we had that conversation with the investors too the other day, and they were like, "Oh, you know, where do you see the markets going? There's the world is here, and the world, the war is here, and this and that." And I said, "Maybe I'm missing something because I wasn't here. I wasn't in this cycle when the market crashed in '08, right?" Yeah. So we did numbers before. I asked my one of the investors because he and he, 08 he was invested heavily in many different things like stocks, real estate, whatever he was invested in, and he took a big hit. And I told him, I don't know what you invested in before, right? But 
correct me maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm not seeing something that that you're seeing but if i purchase land for 250 dollars a foot right and i develop it for another 300 350 a foot all in let's say 385 all in right i'm in it for let's say low 600s and my selling prices anywhere between let's say worst case scenario 1100 to 1300 a foot where's my risk i remember you told me this the other day you said you guys see a risk i don't see a risk where's my risk i i I just i i I, I, and then you made me step back and i'm like you know what let me think about it where's my risk if even if the market corrects by say 50 percent you're still at a break even and if the market there's not even that wait 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 hold on if i'm in it for 630 or 600 dollars a foot i bring from home between me and the investors right we bring 250 dollars a foot out of that money so that means that means that i have a product that's worth 12 1300 dollars a foot right and i only leverage i only leverage 300 dollars 350 Where's my risk? It's a great way to look at it. Again, I don't know. I asked my investor and he he had no, he's like, you know, you're right. I said, so we're not going to make the money that we're thinking we're going to make. But we're going to bring all our money back home. We're going to sit on it. We're going to rent it. Or if we don't want to do that, we can sell it not at loss. We're going to sell it for less profit. But we're gonna be. That's that's the power. Of, that's the power of buying right and developing it right, and doing all the moves the right way. Because realistically, if the market corrects by forty percent, correct, we're in big trouble. Okay, it's yeah. a much bigger issue in the whole world. Correct. Than just. You but know, then you had no control. So what exactly. are you gonna do? Every time, every but time, every time I here, said, every every time, uh, every time I said and waited, and people said, oh, you know, like in COVID, whatever. Oh, the market is gonna crash. Every time we said and and did nothing and waited for the market to correct, we lost because it never happened. And the honest truth is that they're they've been telling me that the market is going to crash since the day we started. Since the day we started. Yeah. And me too. Uh, look, but it's, you know what I mean? you have to it's ten years later. It might be. It might be. It, it, the market might crash. The mar- The market might crash. We don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't see it happen. I don't see it happen. I see it maybe, uh, maybe correcting, but if it's, but if it's gonna get corrected, that means that your rents are gonna go a lot higher than what it is, because if people are not gonna buy houses, they're gonna be renting houses. They can't be living on the streets. Yeah. Right. Look, I'm not worried about a market crash because my business model is nearly recession proof and historically as safe as possible. You're in a much riskier environment but the way you look at it is if the market crashes even in half i'm not losing money i have to sit back my worst you know what's my worst you know my worst my worst case scenario he's having your game plan yeah your game plan is to keep yeah right that's it i mean i keep a lot of stuff too you know but my my main focus is to finish the product first whether i sell it or you make much more money than i do no question. Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's you make a lot of money in new condo developments. We, I mean, it's the highest return possible. Correct. It's like spec home building. Correct. You're not making twelve million dollars buying a seventy thousand dollar rental in St. Louis. Correct. You know, you only get those kind of numbers in city urban developments with sellouts. Correct. Correct. And it's well deserved. You're putting out a premium product. Yep. That's that's what you know. That's that's what I'm in it for. I don't want to. There's a lot but of people. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now you want to be in the rental game even stronger. Um, not in New York. No, not in New York. Yes, me too. I, I slow down. Outside, outside, New outside, York. outside New York. Yes, I. Oh, I mean, actually, I, 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 I have commercial in New York. Um, I'm buying a lot of warehouses correct. now. Uh, listen, I'm in the rental game before I'm in the development game. I, I started keeping. I have units since seven, eight years ago. You know, I always believe. In, in keeping properties I'm just not a uh, believer in New York right now like in the rental game the laws so are much. horrendous the, the laws are 
I can't even describe it, you know, and because they're getting worse. They're getting worse and, and it's not, it's not, it's like they're kicking us out from investing here on the rental. So it's fine because I look at it as, as buying diamonds, right? Like raw diamonds. So I can, we can buy it anywhere. You know, we can buy it in Houston. We can buy it in Miami. We can buy it in anywhere that the laws are, are, are welcoming me. I will be there. And I will develop and and build my rental por- portfolio. You see rental properties as raw diamonds. I like that analogy. I I, I look at real they estate. They are diamonds. I, I look at real estate as raw diamonds. You know, that's what I, that's what I look at it, and I I feel like I'm I'm a setter. You know, I know how to st- I know how to clean it up, and I know how to bring the best out of it. You know where. It, whether I increase the square footage on it or I the past year what I do is is I do a a lot of alterations is I'm gonna give you a secret right this past year everything everything that we um, we developed we called it an old one and not a new building ask me why why when you file as a new building they just you don't know what to expect you don't know what to expect when you finish the building as far as like taxing your building so when we call it an alteration and not a new building, your 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 tax bill on the building when it's done it's less than half than what it is on a new building. So any any property that we buy, if it's not a straight land, if it's a warehouse or if it's a one story one story, let's say one family, and I can put up an eight unit on top of it, I call it an alteration. You know, and and those tax savings are exponentially correct more important than you know it's 10 times more cost efficient absolutely so i'll tell you why i'll give you an example right we f- i finished a 10 unit uh, building in bushwick um an elevator building 10 unit and the taxes came in at eighty five thousand a year which means which means a one bedroom or a two bedroom unit is paying nearly um, eighty five hundred a year, right? That directly impacts your price per foot on the sell out. Correct. Yeah, it crushes you. It's a lot of money because now you gotta you gotta pay your taxes first, then you are paying your maintenance on a condo, and then you are paying your your, your insurance, then your mortgage, and then it's it becomes crazy. Yeah. Then I I I did another ten units in that same neighborhood, and I called it an old one, and uh, taxes came in at. Twelve thousand dollars. Wow. So, how much did you sell out the first building for, and how much did you sell the second one for? I got for the the first building we sold out nearly. Um, overall number was seven point three, seven point four. It was nine hundred dollars a foot. And what about the second building? Second building was. Uh, it was uh, closer to almost eleven hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, let's say a thousand between between a thousand to eleven hundred dollars, but it was a lot faster. So you made three million dollars by just changing one tax code. Correct. Three million dollars extra. Well, it's, I would say a million dollars because you're looking at a gross square footage. But oh, so uh, less square footage. Yeah. So you made a million dollars by just changing. But the way but you but the I was on the market for a lot less time. Like over here, I was in contract on the entire ten units within one month. Over there, it was. It took me a year to wow. put ten units in contract, and that's like my hard money, and my loan was costing me another four hundred thousand this past year that was on the market. So, and also I'm returning the investors and my own money faster, so I can go on a deal. It's again. And before we started the podcast, you just threw out there quickly. We I just bought a management company. I said I'll stop. stop not stop. not a management this company. Is, we have to talk about this on the podcast. Um, we bought um, we bought a, a real estate company that's doing. Um, it, it was that real estate company was doing all my rentals for the past seven eight years, and uh, they started doing sales not too long ago. And one of the owners uh, started developing in Costa Rica. And uh, and I offered him. Listen, you're not even here most of the times, and I'm dealing with your office so much. And he was like, "Yeah." And I said, "I want to buy you out, maybe. You know, I want to. I I I know your other partner. He loves working with me. And I end up buying that company. It, it only makes sense for me to buy it because anyway, they're doing most of my stuff. That's great. And you know, you remember I spoke to you. I'm really into businesses. This past two years, I'm buying. 
different businesses. I'm investing in many different things other than real estate. Yeah. Everything that I'm investing is has to do somehow with my field. You remember when I talked you out of buying a restaurant? Correct. You remember yeah. that? <laughs> so that was the best advice I think you ever gave me, Evan. Correct. Correct. It is. It is. Um, even though it's my dream to own a nice, a really nice restaurant where... You know, not it's not really about the money again. It's more of like having my own uh, restaurant coming in. You know, either for the meetings or as a hangout spot or whatever. But it's not, you know, it's not it's not really important. Uh, I want to stay in my field. I want to stay any in construction, in real estate, in 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 the field where it's benefit it's benefiting my 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 business. Anything I buy has to benefit my business. I agree. And, um, that's the way to do it. Yeah. So that's why... And we, that's what I'm doing too. Correct. That's yeah. why we bought that real estate company. Awesome. Oh, yeah, you're the man. You're the man. We got to do a condo building together. That's the next thing. I'm I, ready whenever you are. I got to get in with you on a condo building or we got to buy a house. I'm actually, uh, off the record, I'm actually working on something. Nobody's really involved. On the money side. On the money side or anything. I like to first... Put the deal together. I, I like to put the deal together and see that everything is actually kosher and we can actually do whatever I'm thinking I can do and then after that we put it together awesome I want to shut up the cameras and talk about this more okay. it was awesome having you bro pleasure I love you Ali I love you too